brown immersion has a quite a fascinating history. Uh, it's been discovered long ago. It's been discovered in 1827 by a botanist called uh, Robert Brown. And what he did, he looked at uh, pollen under a microscope. And what he observed, pollen were jiggling around all the time. And he was quite puzzled by that. And at that time, he thought about maybe this could be some force of life. Uh, but uh, that uh, in the end turned out to be wrong. And he uh, did uh, several experiments to prove this. For example, he took uh, some uh, inorganic powder in the same experiment and again he saw all this jiggling. And uh, this has been a, a huge puzzle for quite some decades and the final answer could then be given by Albert Einstein uh, in 1905. Uh, interesting in the same year when he also published a theor uh, theory about special relativity and in that very year he also published a seminal paper about Brown in motion and what he could show that Brown in motion is one proof or a manifestation of uh, the existence of atoms. In some sense, we're building on the work of Einstein and uh, using his thoughts and ideas and, and uh, you're doing useful stuff with it. The Brownian motion is when um, particles, nanoscale, very tiny particles, are suspended in water or in any liquid. Then the molecules of the water um, start to hit the target because the molecules make motion called thermal motion. They have some energy and they float back and forth and they hit the particles all the time. Now, because they hit them from all sides, but not regularly, the, the particles also start to jiggle around in a very um, random and, and chaotic uh, fashion. And this motion is called Brownian motion. Now, in order to get this directed motion, you need an as asymmetric um, feature in your device. So in this case, it's similar like um, a, um, a ratchet, like a screwdriver where you have these uh, teeth and the ratchet uh, slides along the teeth and locks in one direction but can slide in the other direction. Similar in our Brownian motor implementation, we have similar teeth and the particles can float um, along this shallow slope but they cannot float or much more difficult, they can float only in the other direction. So at the end we have this jiggling Brownian mot motion and we have these teeth and so the particles start to jump now, if we wouldn't do anything, if we wouldn't apply an external force, they would jump, still jump back and forth in the same rate. But now we, in addition, we apply an external force, which makes the particles uh, drive more vigorously along this direction. And then they really start to travel along this shallow slope of this sawtooth um, potential. As one of the main applications, what we see for this kind of motors is uh, separation of nanoparticles. Now, this could be nanoparticles like, for example, bigger biomolecules, proteins, DNA, or also um, nanoparticles like gold or plastics, which are a concern in terms of pollution of the environment. So if you could separate them out of the liquid, that would be a nice application. Now, in order to do the separation, what we uh, do is we combine two of these motors, one of them having the tooth a little bit taller and the other motor showing the other direction and having the uh, teeth a little bit uh, lower down. So the bigger particles fit to this um, lower down ratchet better and the smaller particles to the higher ratchet. So the smaller particles will travel in this direction and the bigger ones in that direction. And that very effectively uh, um, separates the particles. So we could show in the paper that we can separate uh, 60 and 100 nanometer particles just within two seconds. So there are, I would say, two main uh, goals uh, or near-term goals for our research. So the one goal is to, because we've been looking at particles that uh, were relatively large, yes, which had a size of uh, tens of nanometers, uh, which is still really huge in comparison to uh, molecules like DNA, for example. Uh, so we want to test uh, how small we can get. Uh, so if our motor also works for um, uh, biomolecules, DNA and so on. Yeah, so that's the one goal. And the other goal is, uh, uh, is more focused towards sorting because in the paper we uh, also, before the paper we developed a model uh, that predicts that we can sort nanoparticles uh, with a resolution of the order of one nanometer. Uh, so up to now this is a theoretical model which we trust and which is based on uh, uh, all the work and all the experiments we've done so far but that's something we uh, really have to test and verify uh, experimentally. So these are the two near-term goals we want to focus on.